Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Yeah, today, uh, we looked very small, but then <clears throat> you want to meditate the, the grace of God deeply through this time. We want to meditate the book of First Peter chapter two. <clears throat> First Peter chapter two from verse nine and ten. First Peter, First Peter chapter two, verse nine and ten. <clears throat> I will read First Peter chapter two, verse nine and ten. When you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a royal, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. <clears throat> Amen. Through this time, then, we want to <clears throat> meditate the God's calling, the grace of God's calling for each one of us. Uh, So, why did God call us? <laughs> why did God save us? Did you think about this one? Why did God call each one of us? Why did God save us? Because God loves us, right? Yeah. But then why did God save us? For us to live well in this world, eating well, <laughs> enjoying all the wealth in the world. Is it the, the, the purpose of God for, for our life? The, God, the purpose of God calling our life? Mm. And here he says that then, <clears throat> Then you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. That's the purpose of God, as God called each one of us. You may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So then God, also, God can be also glorified through our Life of faith. As God save each one of us, as God call each one of us, <clears throat> and for example, you are living very simple life, very dirty life, very dark life. But then God changed me. <laughs> I was very simple. But then even this guy, even I was very miserable. But then God changed me. God guided me to the brightness of God, to the light of God, then, ah, God changed my life. Ah, I can experience the great hand of God. I could experience the great hand of God. Even people can realize then, ah, God changed his life. Huh? God saved him. He was living very simple life, very miserable life, very, very miserable in this world. But then, ah, God did a great work. Even God is healed him from the critical disease. Even God also say, forgave all his sins. Ah, how could he change his life? Yeah, God, is, God is the one who changed his life. Huh? That's how <clears throat> God wants to be glorified through our life of faith. Huh? As God also saved each one of us, even we ourselves, we can experience the great, what is it, hand of God, the great blessing of God for our life. 
And then through our life of faith, God can be also glorified through our life of faith. For example, John chapter 9. John chapter 9. Jesus, Jesus opened the, the blind who was born as a blind. But then through that, then Jesus could be revealed. Ah, Jesus is, Jesus is the one who, who opened his eyes. Acts chapter 3, the same. Who was who was born who was born born crippled, but then through through that the miracle by Peter and John, then the 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 name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth could be revealed through this miracle, and then through the power of Jesus Christ, then even he himself, this crippled man, could be saved, could change his life, the great change of his life, and then. Through his uh, being saved, then even he could, he could also glorify God for his life. So what I'm saying is this one. Uh, we are not supposed to glorify ourselves. <laughs> huh? We are not supposed to glorify ourselves. We are, but then we, are, we should glorify God for all our life. The one who changed my life is God. Huh? The one who saved my life is God. We should not forget this. We should not forget this grace of God for our life. And then we should glorify God for all our life. So verse 9, <coughs> that's how God saved the Israelites. And then God also glory, even God also but using, glorifying even the Israelites. God also will glorify us as we are trying to glorify God through our life. Verse 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. That's how God regards us very preciously. Very, what is it? Very precious being in this world. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. That's how God would also change our life. For example, you are the fisherman, but I will make you the fisher, fishers of men. You are the sinners, the great sinners, but then as God saves you, even God will make you the Holy nation, royal priesthood. You will be the priest. God will make you the priest, the great priest, uh, bishop, <laughs> and pastors, uh, reverend. That's how God also wants to change us, change our life, bless our life. God wants to bless our life. Before then, you are, you are living very simple life. Just following our simple desires, wandering at night. But then now, as God called each one of us, as God saved us, even our life can be different from before. God is calling us, making us a chosen people, royal priesthood, like kings, like a king. But then we can be the priest, kingly, kingly priest. Very like noble. God can change our life very nobly. A holy nation, and, God, and we will be, God will change us to be the holy nation of God. Holy nation, God's special possession. So that's how God will change us. God will change our life. God will glorify us so that. You may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his, his wonderful light. So that we can glorify God through our life. Verse 10. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Yeah. You are not the people of God, but now you are living is the people of God. Once you had not received the mercy, but now you have received the great mercy of God. That's the great 
only by this great grace of God we could receive the mercy of God. Before that, you are in the darkness, but we could receive the light, the light of God. That's how God is blessing each one of us. And then God wants to be also glorified through our life of faith. So, therefore, verse 1, uh, chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Yeah. So, we need to, yeah, we need, as we accept the God's calling, then we should remove all those evil things, sinful life, sinful habit from our life. Hypocritical life, envious, slander, every kind of the sins, we need to run away, escape, stop committing sins. But, verse 2, like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that, be, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. But then, instead of following those, the sinful desires through our life, for our life, but then we can be like the newborn baby. Like the newborn baby, newborn babies are really there. They really like the, 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 the milk, right? Even here, a baby. She really likes the, the milk, pure. We need to be like the baby, huh? newborn baby. Like newborn babies, crave desire, pure spiritual milk. So we, we need to try to this drink this pure spiritual milk from God, the word of God, the life, the bread of life, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, so that we can grow in God. After we are saved, as we continue to live Drinking this pure spiritual milk from God, we can grow in God. We can grow. We can be matured in God. We can grow resembling Jesus Christ. So then we can grow to be the holy nation, the chosen people of God. Even we can be the royal priesthood for this world. So, we want to know the purpose of God's calling, saving each one of us. And then with this hope, as God calls each one of us with this great hope, we also want to, we can also live with this hope, the new hope in God through our life. So, we also want to see <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1. <clears throat> I will read. Isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Here, the similar messages. Now, yeah, stand up, rise up, the people, my people. R arise and shine, shine the light of God. Because the glory of God is with you. The light of God is upon you. Arise, shine for your light. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, Darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and His glory appears over you. Yeah, the world is yeah, under the darkness. Huh? The darkness covers the earth, and the thick darkness over the peoples in this world. Peoples, all kind of peoples, all nations, all races of the people, all tribes. But the Lord, the Lord rises upon you, and His glory appears 
over you. Yeah. So we can be in this, under this light of God, while the world is <laughs> under the darkness, <laughs> under the misery. That's why we can have the hope. We can live with this hope, the great hope in God. So as you read, then we can even remind, right? The, 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 among the ten disasters at the time of Exodus, huh? God brought ten disasters against the Egyptians. But then, the dark, the disaster of darkness, the whole land of Egypt, they were full of darkness. Do you remember? <laughs> but at the land where the Israelites were staying, the land of Goshen, Goshen there was no, no, no darkness. The light was there. Only the light was there oh, for, the, for the land of Goshen. But all other lands in Egypt, they were covered with darkness. Even they could not even <laughs> move. <laughs> not like the darkness nowadays at night without the power. But still we can see, right? Yeah, we can see. But not that kind of darkness. Full of darkness. No darkness at all. So the world was full of darkness. But then, at the land of the, the people of God, at the land of Goshen, Goshen yeah, they had the light. Huh? Maybe look at the world. The world is full of darkness. But then, as long as we live with faith, as long as we believe in God, obeying His word, trying to follow the will of God, then the darkness cannot control our life. Hmm? The darkness cannot control our life. The Lord rises upon you and His glory appears of you. Verse 3. <clears throat> so that's how God will glorify us. Huh? You are the chosen people. You are the holy nation. And then I want to bless you. And then even you will have the great advantage in God. Huh? You will have the great advantage in God. The darkness cannot control you. The sins, the violence cannot control you, cannot harm you. As I am with you, as I will protect you, as I will guide you, even through the dark valleys. Hmm? Psalm chapter 23. So we have this great, <laughs> we receive this great mercy of God for our life. Verse 3, nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Yeah. The nations, they will come to us to, fi to find the light, the light, the, the salvation, the true light from us. They will come to us. Verse 4, lift up your eyes and look about you, all assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters are carried on the hip. Then, then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you, the riches of the nations will come. Hordes of cam camels will cover your land. Young camels of Midian and Alpha and all, all from Sheba will come, bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The, the, the world will come to you. The world will come to you. Bringing all the wealth to you, what? Proclaiming what? The praises of the Lord. <laughs> they will come to us praising God. Somehow difficult to understand, right? <laughs> it's the when the where is the as the waters cover the sea, when the water when the word of God is overflowing, spreading all of this world, the new world will come. So at the time of like Roman Empire, do you know it? Roman Empire. Ah. Before that, we can. Uh, there is a somehow interesting story. Long time ago, there, uh, there was a, it was a country that it was very cold season, full of snow at the mountain. 
full of snows at the mountain. And then, at that time, when there is a lot of snow, then usually the animals are also difficult to find the food. Difficult to find. <laughs> so, one day, the, when there was so much snow in the mountainside, then, the, but then there was the human's house there, huh? it, at the mountainside, human's house. But then the animals, like the wadok, wadok, you remember wadok? Wadok and some like the leopard and those things, they just came before the house. <laughs> came before the house. And then maybe they were knocking the door of the house. And then they were just surrendering themselves before, before the humankind. Why? <laughs> they were hungry. <laughs> they could not eat well. They could not eat well. So they wanted to eat. They wanted to eat the food. They wanted to be given with food. That's why they were coming before the house, before the house of the humankind. Then they were asking food. <laughs> Even though they could not say, but they were just asking food. Can you give some food? <laughs> the animals, they were waiting before the house of the humankind. So at that time, the humans, they should not kill those animals. Huh? Usually humans, they kill the wadok, and then they eat the wadok very deliciously. <laughs> but then at that time, they are not supposed to kill the wadok. Huh? Because they were trying to come down before the humankind, to save themselves, to save themselves, at the time of starvation. So this kind of time will come. For example, long time ago at Roman Empire, uh, Roman Empire, how, how the, the Roman, the Romans were, do you know? How they were so corrupted and so dirty. Uh, sexually immoral, especially homosexuality was there. So much homosexuality. So simple. The world was so simple, especially at the time of Roman Empire. So then even the, 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 the royal family, the royal family was also very, they were really corrupted. You know, you can, when you read the Bible, when you read the, the history book, or when you even look at the, 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 the movies, background, if we, whose background is the Roman Empire, then you can find that the Roman Empire was so much like, what is it? Full of corruption and homosexuality and those sins. <laughs> so then, the, even the royal family, they wanted to, they wanted to marry well. And they wanted to let their, their children marry well. But then the problem is, the, the young people, they were all corrupted, all were dirty, all were living very dirty life. Homosexuality and those sexual immorality. Yeah. But then, the royal family, they could find the, the good people there. Who were good people? The Christians. <laughs> the Christians were good people. The Christians were the one, the one who were not defiling themselves. The Christians' life was somehow clean. That's why the royal families at the time of Roman Empire, they were marrying with many Christians. That's why the Christians, they became, they were included as the royal family. That's how even the royal family, the Christianity could be also increasing among the royal families. That's how the Roman, the, the palace of the Roman Empire, it could be, the Christianity could be growing and growing. And then later, around the AD 3rd or AD 4th century, the, the Roman Empire, they accepted it. Ah, this Christianity, this should be our state religion. Huh? This should be our state religion. That's how the, 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 the Roman Empire started to change. That state religion, the Christianity became the state religion of Roman Empire is Catholic Church. Yeah, Catholic. So anyway, here, what I'm trying to say is this one. 
When the time comes, when the world is so simple, but then when the people of God, when they can, when they can what? Keep their purity before God. And then they, the world will come to the people of God and they will find, they will praise God. They will find, they will come to, to, the, come to the people of God finding the hope, the new hope in God. That's how it will be happening. Does it make sense? <laughs> so, and all from, yeah. so they will, they will come to God and then they will come to the people of God. They will proclaim the praises of the Lord. And verse 7, All Kedar's flocks will be gathered to you. The rams of the Nebiot will serve you. They will be accepted as offerings on my altar, and I will adorn my glorious temple. Yeah. So all the people, they will come before God. They will come to the people of God, huh? serving the people of God. And then I will adorn my glorious temple. So then God can be, God would be glorified, even in this world. That's how it will be happening in the end of the last, in, at, the, at, the, at the last days in this world. And verse 10, verse 10 to 14, from verse 10, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 10, Foreigners will rebuild your world, and your kings will serve you, though in anger I struck you, in favor I will show you compassion. Yeah, because of the anger against the sinful Israelites, then God struck the people of God. That's why they were really, they became so miserable. But then, in favor, with love, with the forgiveness of God, God, with the compassion of God, God, what is it? Recovered. God recovered the Israelites. So then, foreigners will rebuild your walls, and the, the broken walls, God will rebuild it. Foreigners will rebuild your walls, and their kings will serve you. Verse 11. Verse 11 is important. <laughs> Your gates will always stand open. They will never be shut day or night, so that people might may bring you the wealth of the nations. Their kings led in triumphal possession. Mm. So what is it? Your, your gates will always stand open. Your gates will not be closed, will not be shut. What is it? The gate of the temple of God. Many people will come. And then you are the gate of heaven. The gate of heaven or the, the, gate, the gate of temple. It's, it will not be closed. But when you look at the many churches in the world, especially the churches in like Western countries, many churches are closing down. Huh? They are not really opening during the weekdays, only on Sunday. But even on Sunday, they cannot open. <laughs> they are closing down. But then, at the new world, when the mercy, when the Spirit of God is overflowing, when the Word of God is overflowing in this world, then people will come to God, come to the church, to, to the temple of God. Then the temple of God, it will not be closed down. It will not be locked. It will not be closed. It will, it will not be shut. All people, so that many people will bring you the wealth of the nations. Their kings led in triumphal positions. And they will be what is it? defeated. The kings in the world, they will be defeat, defeat, defeated and led to God. Verse 12, For the nation or kingdom, they will not serve, uh, they, they, will, they will not serve, for the nation or kingdom that will not serve you will perish. It will be utterly ruined. What is it? If the kingdom or the world, if they will not, if they don't serve you, then they will be perishing. They will be perishing. So it will be utterly ruined. It means uh, the people of God, <laughs> they will have the power. <laughs> they will have the majority. Majority. They will have the standard. 
That's how God will bless the people of God. Verse 13, The glory of Lebanon will come to you, the juniper, the fir, and the cypress together, to adorn my sanctuary, and I will glorify the place for my feet. Even the Lebanon, there are so many good uh, good trees in, in, in Lebanon. You know, at, when King Solomon was uh, building the temple of God, the first temple of God, then many trees, many, many, many woods was, was sent from Lebanon. The good, the good trees, the good wood, the timbers. So even the world from Lebanon, they will bring, I'm not sure, Juniper, the, for Cypress, we know Cypress, right? Maybe Cypress would be very good, very good wood. Even they will bring the Cypress and those four Juniper to adorn my sanctuary. They to build the temple of God. They will bring it to the temple of God to build. Yeah. That's how the, the world will come before God. Verse 14, the children, the children of your oppressors will come bowing before you, and all who despise you will bow, will bow down in your feet, and you will call, and will call you the city of the Lord, Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Yeah. The children of your oppressors will come, come bowing before you. Yeah. Even the enemies, the children of the enemies, they will come before you, bow, bowing down before you. And then the, the one who are despising you, even they will come bowing down at your feet. That's how God will also defeat the enemies. The, the, they will also come before God, surrendering themselves before the people of God. So they, they will call you the city of the Lord. They will call you the city of the Lord, the, the giant of the Holy One of Israel. Because if we are the people of God, if we are the city of the Lord, then the, the world, even the strong world, the enemies, even the ugly enemies, later, even they will come before God. They will come before the people of God, surrendering themselves. That's how God will do His great work. God will reveal His glory through our life of faith. So God is planning to do these kind of great things through our life of faith. In verse 18, verse 18 to 20, I will read. <clears throat> No longer will violence be heard in your land, no, no ruin or destruction within your borders. But you will call your words salvation and your case praise. So at the new, at the new world, no longer will violence be heard in your land. Yeah, the violent world, it will be disappearing. Yeah, no violence in this new world, in the, in the new land of God. No violence, no ruin, or no destruction within your borders, the borders of the kingdom of God. No violence, yeah, no hating, no killing, no harming against each other. So this beautiful world will come. And then salvation will be your world. The praise will be your gates. Yeah, you will praise God. Salvation, the protection of salvation. The protection, the salvation can be our protection. Verse 19, The sun will no longer be your light by day, nor will the bright brightness of the moon shine on you, for the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Yeah. Don't, we don't need to dep live depending on the sun or moon. Here, it's not just talking about the sun, the physical sun or the moon. Actually, the light of God is much greater than the sun or the moon. Or the, the great figure of this world, the great like <laughs> glory. <laughs> huh? Glory. Those sun, sun will no longer be your light by day, 
Nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you. For the Lord will be your ever everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Yeah. God will be our glory. Yeah. So, verse 20. Verse 20. Your sun will never set again, and your moon will rain no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. That's how God wants to bless, each, bless our life. Your sons will never set again. Your sons will never set again. Maybe we will just come back. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 60. Don't cover, don't <laughs> close this one. We will, but then we just want to look at another part and then we will come back to Isaiah chapter 60. Joshua chapter 10, verse 12. Joshua chapter 10, verse 12. Joshua chapter 10, verse 12, it says that, <clears throat> Joshua chapter 10, verse 12, On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua says to the Lord in the presence of Israel, Son, stand still over uh, Son, stand still over Gibbon, and you moon over the valley of Ajalon. Ajalon. <laughs> so the sun, the sun stood still and the moon stu stopped till the nation avenged itself on its enemies. That's how Joshua commanded the sun and the moon, sun stop, <laughs> sun stop. If the sun stops, then until the Israelites defeat all the enemies, that then the sun didn't set, the sun didn't go down. Do you understand? Yeah. The glory of God was remaining until God would give the, the victory for his people. The glory of God was standing. Huh? There, in the sky. You know, the UK is called the nation which doesn't sunset. <laughs> whose sunset, whose sun doesn't set. Huh? UK's glory is so great. You know, it means, it means that then the glory of UK is so great. That's why Ah, the, in UK, the sun would not set. The sun would not go down. But then nowadays, you know, <laughs> even the glory of UK is going down, right? But in the history, you know, from UK, so many countries were like glory, uh, colonized or, or opened by God. Huh? And from UK, then so many missionaries went, went to each, each side of the country, each corner of the, each corner of the world, then so many countries were affected by UK. Then even so many people could be God through UK. So that's why God gave the great glory to UK. But nowadays, yeah, <laughs> they are losing. As they are losing their spiritual spirituality, then even <laughs> their sun is going down. Yeah? The the theologians are saying that then the the time of UK is like almost 11, 11 o'clock at night. 11 o'clock. The, the, the time of U.S. is around 5, 5 o'clock in the, in, in the afternoon, 5 o'clock. They are almost like sun, sun is sunset. Their glory is gone now. Why? They left God. Huh? Instead of they are living with faith, worshiping God, but then Muslims, sinners, they are really increasing. And then <laughs> there is no glory of God there now. So they need to be recovered. The churches were clo was closed down. And then we need to recover this. We need to recover this lost ship of Israel. 
And then we need to recover the kingdom of God. But here at the time of Joshua, then the, the, the glory of God we together with the, the, the Israelites. That, that's why through the Israelites, the enemy, the sinners, the great sinners was defeated by the people of God, by the chosen people of God, the great sinners, the enemies, idol worshippers. It's the glory of God to be, was together with the people of God. So we go back to Isaiah chapter 60, verse 20. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 20. Your son will never say it again. <laughs> yeah. God's glory will be together with us. Huh? Eternally. As long as we live with faith, glorifying God. Your sons will never set again, and your moon will rain no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. So, God will wipe the tears from our eyes. And then, when the new world comes, then yeah, the joy, the day, the days of joy will come to our life. The new, the new things will be happening through our life of faith. So as we meditate this word of God, then we want to realize that then the great, what, is, what will be the will of God for our life? God wants to, to, God wants to save each one of us. God really wants to bless each one of us. And then God also wants to be glorified through our life of faith. So God wants to make us the holy nation. God called us the holy nation, royal priesthood, the chosen people of God. And then, that's how God wants to save us. And then, God also wants to save many people through our life of faith. So, God has this great hope to call each one of us. So, we want to live with this hope in God. Huh? Don't be discouraged. <laughs> you don't need to be in the darkness anymore. We are in the light of God. You are in the light of God. So the God's glory is with us. God's glory is with us. We don't need to be in the darkness. We can stand up. We can rise up. Rise up. The glory of God is with you. So as you believe in this, then we really want to live enjoying this light of God, the glory of God through our life. And then we ourselves can really overcome the world with faith, the problems, difficulties, <laughs> temptations. And then we also want to help others who are also suffering, who are also under the darkness in this simple world. So then the will, the great will of God can be fulfilled through our life of faith, so then even the great prophecies, the great beautiful prophecies of God can be realized in this world through our faith. So we want to end here. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us this time to come before you to meditate your word. As you loved this world, even though you are the great sinners, but then you loved each one of us, you sent, as you sent your one and only Son, that as your Son died for all our sins, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but then we can be saved, we can also receive the eternal life from God. So then we want to realize that how God saved each one of us, and also why God saved each one of us, why God called each one of us, even though while, while we were still sinners, we were under the darkness, we were under the sins, we were living in, the, in our sins. But then, as you had compassion on us, as you had pity on us, you forgave all our sins by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And then you gave us the new life. You gave us the new opportunities 
for our life. So then you called us, and then you changed our life. So then we are, we, we are not under darkness anymore, but then we can be in the light of God. Even your glory of God can be in us. So then as we meditate this word of God, we want to realize this deeply that you called us with your great mercy and purpose to great hope through our life of faith. So then with this hope, we want to overcome this world. And so with this hope, as we continue to follow your will, then your great will, your great plan can be fulfilled in this world. So thank you for all your grace through this time. Then I pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And thank you very much. God bless you all.